What's going on everybody? It's your boy, Do It With Dan. And if you're new to the channel, here's what's going on. I bought a 1989 notchback Fox body Mustang. It needs a lot of work, and I do mean a lot. Uh, I bought it just to hoon around and stuff like that. Found out that everything was pretty much screwed. And if someone like me hadn't gotten it, they probably would have died or something. I don't know. The point is, is that we have to basically do everything. If you're just now tuning back in, last episode we cut the floors out and then started welding up some, some tube for our tube chassis, which is looking real nice. I'm gonna do the other side, uh, start trying to build that cage. I don't really have a specific goal in mind for today's video, I just have a lot of work to do and I'm just gonna start doing stuff, you know what I'm saying? Spend too much time trying to plan, trying to figure things out, you just gotta figure them out as you go. But this is YouTube and this is Do With Dan, so obviously I have a sponsor for today's video, which is our family over at Raid Shadow Legends, editing version of myself, take it away. Let me ask you something. If you ever want to be the hero of your own fantasy, well, let me tell you about a game called Raid Shadow Legend. You can collect and upgrade and train and equip your heroes so you can start the journey of a lifetime. And here's the cool thing is that Raid is available on both PC and your mobile device. All right, let's go and open up our, uh, let's go and open up our shards. So the cool things about this game is it doesn't matter if they're good or not, they're still useful, you know? If they're good, you can still upgrade them, and if they're bad, you can, uh, you can sacrifice them and use them to upgrade your good guys. You know, like politics. All right, I'm gonna open up one. Okay. All right, I think I can probably use that. You'll probably use that. We'll hold on to him for a little while. Mm. Push yourself to the edge, man. An ongoing tournament. You can compete against the entire raid community while fighting the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, the Mighty Fire Knight, or the Notorious Dragon. And with May's new patch, you'll be able to compete in brand new arena tournaments. Earn points according to your tier and win awesome rewards in the both global and local arenas. Don't forget you can find me on the nickname Captain Dingleberry and if you're quick enough you can join my clan. So what are you waiting for? Link's in the description. Go to my description, click on my special link and you'll get 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, and the Executioner Champion for free. And it's all available, right? Right here. It's only available for the next 30 days, so see you out there. All right, thanks other version of me. Now it's time to get started on today's project. So I guess I'm gonna let the Mustang down and we'll start where we left off. Wait, 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 actually I wanna talk about something. Uh, last video I talked about getting an air dryer for my, uh, for my air compressor to my plasma cutter. I did. Also got a, uh, a new nozzle on the torch here. So this bad boy is ready to rip. audio is gonna be I have the fan and that thing running but I also got a fiberglass blanket underneath me it's gonna prevent you know burning my floors in the future like a welding and a plasma cutting blanket it's underneath me
justice. Stand up, are you sitting on my phone? Let's stand the fuck up. <laughs> are you on my remote? Shit. I've done broke me fucking foil. You should have rolled a shovel or something. Hitting it into place and then I'm gonna attack again. Finish up me welds, I can. Base plate stacked in place. Alright, so I have the Tubing on this side done as well. It's just kind of tacked in place there. It'll make a good like little support for us to build off of. And like we got that one over there, nice and square. Same over here. Now I think the next thing I need to do is build the loop. I'm gonna build the cage loop. Uh, obviously it's gonna go in here, set in place on there, tack it in place. Then I think we can cut out the rest of our floors and rear suspension out, we can take that out. I've just been kind of piece by piece figuring out what the next best step is and this is what I've decided. Which means that we need to do a lot of math. We need to create a cheater tube. Let's go over the bender. All right, so I'm gonna create a cheater tube with my tube bender. When tube bending, there's a lot of more math involved, you know, finding angles and whatnot. On the surface level, it seems pretty complex, but actually once you get down to it, it's not that bad. And I'm not gonna explain everything. I'm gonna go over the basics that I'm gonna be using, but again, uh, reference to last time's video, where I talk about two channels. It's the Fabrication Forums and the Fabrication Series. Both those guys, separate individuals, excellent videos for both of them for anything that you need to do, tube bending or welding. Anyway, uh, when using tube in your tube bending, and you make a bend, around a radii, you lose material because it stretches, that's how tube bending works. So if I bend this, it's gonna stretch the material. Every tube is different, every material thickness is different, every diameter, etc. how much material it's gonna use. So I'm gonna create a cheater tube specifically for this inch and three quarter diameter tubing with 0.120 wall thickness. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, I got plenty of material for a 90 degree bend, that's all I'm doing, even though I have a 180 degree bend die. I'm gonna start by taking out all my slack, right, and making a line mark at the beginning of my tube bending die, which will be my start line, right? So I'll know the beginning of my tube bend. And then also what I'm gonna do is, for every 10 degrees at the same place on my tube bender, I'm going to mark another tick mark, and that'll let me know how much material my bend is going to use per 10 degrees of of bend and allow me to calculate for that. Does that make sense? This part of my tube bender sucks. I need to make another one. I need like a wire coat hanger or something. But Planned Parenthood took all those. Not using that? Should I not use that? That's a little rough. It's a little rough, gotcha. A little rough. Very fair. Now this is a manual tube bender, so it sucks. It's a lot of work. I've never bend this thickness of tubing before, so it'll just be what it is. <laughs> all right, so I've zeroed out my bender with all the preload, uh, which means that there's no slack in it. I don't have to worry about any, any slack in my measurements being off. I've got it nice and zeroed out, and I'm basically just going to continue to pull this in one after another until it reaches my 10 degree, make a mark, etc. you'll see. I was worried, I was like, is that gonna let me do it at zero? <clears throat> Holy shit. <clears throat> this is some tough ass tube, dude. <sighs> All right, you can see I'm past 10. Watch what happens when I release it. It's gonna spring back. Look at that. So now we're still actually under 10 degrees. So I'm just gonna go a little bit past 10. 
All right, that looks like 10 to me. Taking all my preload out, all my tension, all my slack, I'm gonna make another mark. The exact same place on my die that I did before, so it's consistent, you know what I'm saying? Consistency. I'm gonna do that for every 10 degrees until I get to 90. Because it's so slick. Good, that's 20. on the 90 degree tube. Give us an idea what a 90 degree bend will look like. The motherfucker got stuck in there. And I do mean stuck. Try that in a minute. So there's our 90 degree bend. I'm gonna go uh, turn these lines into notches so that I can always remember them and I don't have to worry about the, uh, I don't have to worry about the marker fading over time. I'll always know where they're at. All right, so now we have our cheater pipe. Really simple. This is the start of our 90 degree bend. So zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. Suppose I should have measured this whole piece before I started. Fuck. All right, now it's time to start designing your whack ass cage. I got my cheater tube here. We'll use this to kind of reference what degrees that we really need. This is where a mark starts on our die, so we know that uh, this is a good point to start where our turn needs to be. The actual start of the bend is back here, uh, but this is where the beginning of the die start. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower the bar. The old cheater tube, basically. I'm gonna notch the, uh, notch the tube, right, have it go up. Looks like we could potentially get away with a 20 degree bend, maybe a 25, we'll do 25. Yeah, that's a 22 degree-ish slant. So if we do like a 25 degree, you would undercut it just a little bit, you know? Kind of come in. You think I should just try to get it super fucking close? Or do you think we should be safe and do like, oh wait, it's really simple. I do 30 and then what would, 60? I do 30, 60, 60, 30? Something like that, yeah. 30, 60, 60, 30. All right, I need my tape measure. Do I do 12 foot? 12 foot of tubing? and see if uh, I do this right the first time or not. Let's send this bitch to fucking 30 degrees. Send this bitch to 60.
bent on me to get it right the first time, boy do I have some bad news for you. So I did mess it up, like totally messed up the first time, which I, I kind of expected. I got too excited to just bend the tube. I should have stopped and paid a little bit more attention to the angles. Because it's manual tube bender, I have to like set it every time and make sure that my X and Y axis are, are properly centered or zero, depending on what kind of tubes I'm bending. And I ended up getting really sloppy on the inner and outer bends. Anyway, I re ended up having to redo it and I really took my time with it, made sure that my parallel axis, I was not crossing those lines. And the second one actually came out perfect. All right, guys, it's the next day. I spent all of Monday basically building these two uh, hoops. You guys saw it just literally a second ago. This is a great example of failure and I'll show you. So I built this one first. This is the one I spent probably about three and a half hours making, maybe four. Uh, somewhere around there. As you can tell, it is it is a little goofy. It looks worse than it is because this side is extremely longer than the other side, which is just because I had extra tube, who cared? But even so, uh, these bends are less aggressive than these. These are like 30 and 60, and these are like 62 and 32. Really messed these up because I was being impatient. And then even further, you guys will probably be able to tell that this one is kind of more uh, parallel up and down with the Camaro. This one really sticks out further. That's because uh, between here and there, I also got a degree off of my x-axis or y-axis or whatever. Uh, I got it off of the wrong axis, a degree off here and a degree off here. So instead of it being, you know, perfectly horizontal all the way around, first bend kinks out sideways and the second bend kinks out back again. And it. And here's the other one that I made uh, towards the end of the day. It was, so this, like I said, this one took like closer to three or four hours to make. And I made this one in about, about an hour, maybe a little bit less. And these are also on the, the same axis. One side is a little bit longer than the other by like an inch. Uh, but again, that's just because of the way I measured my tubing. So I'll just cut the bottom off and then it'll be even. But I gotta do some shit on here first instead. I changed my mind. Originally I was thinking about building the tube chassis in here and then kind of just connecting everything to the tube chassis in the frame. A couple of the things that I can't wrap my head around, which is whole rear end of the car and, and, and trying to do the frame. The one thing that I'm really struggling with is how I'm gonna do the rear end with the, uh, with the rear end still in, right? But I got a thing about it, I'm like, screw it, I'm gonna build my own four link suspension anyway, so I'm gonna probably delete these two mounts. I'll probably end up changing the way the, uh, the spring system works anyway, you know? So I think it's, it's time for me to, uh, I think it's time for me to drop the axle and drop the front end cradle. Just, just full commit, uh, support the insides the way they're supposed to be supported, like uh, with cross members, just to, just to make sure the body stays nice and true. Then basically just start chopping, you know? I need to cut the floor out, so I think that's what I need to do. Listen to this. I actually had to uh, cut out the other side just because the bolts and whatnot were so uh, seized on. I had to, I literally had to cut the uh, I literally had to cut the cradle out on the other side. But listen to how rusted these uh, the frame rails are. Every time you turn the bolt, you can hear the rust clipping away.
That took way too much goddamn work. You like that guy from Twisted Metal Black? You know what I'm talking about? Great. Has wheels for arms or some shit. All right, so I spent a lot of time kind of trying to figure out what my next step was uh, with, the, with the roll cage or like the harness and stuff like that, and I couldn't couldn't quite get a solid decision on uh, on my end. Decided to do one thing, and then when I start looking at it, I'd be like, no, that's a bad idea, and then I'd stop doing that, and decide to do something else. So, so I just went ahead and said, screw it, pulled out the suspension in the rear end and the front end, and now we're just officially pretty much like a body, or like some quarter panels and some steel. The reason I was holding off is because I need to start, I need to start work on my frame, uh, essentially. I need to start figuring out where I want my frame to go and whatnot, which I couldn't do with all the suspension and axle and whatnot in it. So uh, I went ahead and ripped it all out. And that means I'm also about to start cutting out like the rest of the floor, right? Like that's that's the next step for me. Now before I can do that, I'm gonna throw some more braces through there. Uh, we have lost a lot of rigidity with removing like the front end and the suspension and whatnot. So I am gonna throw some supports in here. I got a couple more pieces of this uh, square stock that I'll just use, uh, tack it in place. Make I'll probably just make a quick X Need to cut this thing out as well. And then uh, I also need to support the front end, uh, whether I decide to do the doors or, or whatnot, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do here yet. Maybe just make a cross member in front of the firewall, but I would like to keep things from flexing. So I'm gonna tack this in and then we're gonna start cutting. Cool, cool. I'm okay. The reason I'm putting it on jack stands is so I can uh, cut the floor out from underneath itself, essentially, anyway. I don't know where my fourth jack stand is. I, know, I have four of these. I, know for, I think I have five of them. All right, I think we have our back supported enough for me to go ahead and start cutting out the rest of the inside. Uh, but of course I could be wrong. Only time will tell when this thing eventually crumples in on itself and kills me. But until then, let's keep working on it. I'm gonna cut out this section of floor pan and uh, frame. There is the frame underneath that runs about where these circles are, feels like. Yeah, about where these circles are is where the frame is. But I'm gonna copy this this piece here I talked about, this archway that kind of goes over the, uh, that, that kind of integrates in the transmission tunnel, goes with the drive shaft and the transmission. And I wanna kind of recreate this little bend here with my tube. I might do it with my tubes. I might do it with my quarter inch thick steel. I guess I'll really decide that when it comes down to it, but uh, right now I wanna figure out what the angle of this is so I can replicate it when it comes time, uh, which is gonna be really easy using one of these little angle cubes. Like I ordered another one of these cause this one's dog shit, but there's way better ones out there. What I'm gonna do, zero this out. Like this is just a regular piece of tube pretty much. And then I'm gonna go over here, figure out what my degree is. 16 degree up here, 18 degree, 19 degree. A lot of it has to do with the inconsistency in this like, I'm gonna say 18 degrees. 18 degrees, that's what this little baby says anyway. Start from there and move if we need to go up to 20. But uh, 18 will probably do us just fine. And this also might be, this this right here might be kind of ghetto, but I'm also just gonna kind of make like a, a really easy reference line to see how tall this thing needs to be. It looks like it needs to come up to about, at least there for it to clear the drive shaft at its current height. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to get it above here at least. That's where the, at least the bottom of it needs to go in the middle. If you don't chew big red, then fuck you.
feel like, you know, I feel like I've made, you know, despite making some changes, I feel like I've made some decent progress today. Which, you know, this, that's how this whole thing's gonna go, right? I'm, I'm about to show you guys uh, what I consider to be, like, not super important, but, like, kind of my thought process. Which I feel like a lot of people don't do. Because I've never seen anybody do things the way I do them, I kind of just have to make all this shit up in my head and as I go. Like, oh yeah, that sounds like a good idea, and, you know, generally it works out pretty okay. Uh, you know, and look at me now. I'm kind of running into the issue that I ran into before, except now I can see everything just a little bit better. And the issue that I ran into before is kind of, okay, what next, right? Pull out the last little bit of just like sh shitty sheet metal that I've somehow escaped my plasma cutter and that'll expose my, my tubes that I've already kind of tacked in here, which I'm pretty sure is the only reason that this thing isn't like bowing in on itself is because I have these, these tubes here. And uh, most of that stuff's basically just tacked in place, so. Ah. Whatever, right? I have some steel 2 by 4s Inches, obviously, because I'm American. I don't know what that is in centimeters or whatever fake measurements you guys use. This is America, god dang it. We speak... We speak Spanish. Everything on this car is, is actually metric anyway. But yeah, anyway, having to decide a couple of things. Obviously, I need a, uh, a frame support that goes in between, and I also need to do frame rails, etc. So right now, I'm trying to think of like a couple different ways that I can uh, I can make a, a frame support. I think I definitely want to use the, uh, the 2x4 here for this particular part of the project. By the time I get down to it, that'll probably have changed. I'm so bad about that, is that I'll stew and stew and stew on something overnight, like I can't, obviously I can't work on it, you know, and I put in all the time thinking about it. I cannot stop thinking about stuff like this. So when I'm not here, I'm thinking about being here and about what to cut and what to do next. And there's, I don't really have a shutoff switch. So like I'll spend all night thinking about like, oh, you know what, that'll probably work. And then I'll come in here and I'll start working on it and be like, that doesn't work. So it's like a bunch of wasted time anyway, right? It's like, I can't shut my brain off. It's actually like something I've probably never spoken about to anyone other than Laura. It's just like, I have this inability Ability to like turn my brain off. I'm constantly like turning in my head different ideas and like how I can build stuff. Another problem that I'm having is deciding where to set my frame rails or how low to set them. I could, I could in theory just do all tube, right? Like I could do just a pure tube chassis, but I, I don't really want to. I like squares. Like I honestly, I don't, I don't like tube. I hate tube. I like squares. I like nice, strong squares. Even though I understand that round tubing is better, I don't like circles. I like squares. That's just how my brain's. So I'm gonna stick with just square frame even though that I recognize that a tubular chassis is more effective I'm not denying that and I don't want to act like I'm denying that. I just want to say that I just prefer squares All right, let's let's cut this section out real quick I fucking hate this thing. Oh, I forgot to cut this thing out while I'm at it. Whew, this thing is kicking my ass. If not mentally, physically. My arms hurt so much from using that saws all day. And I did use it all day. Why did I not wear earplugs again? All right, honestly, man, I'm pretty beat. Like, this thing has is, is done nothing but kick my ass the past couple of days. And I am not complaining. That is not like a, like, Dan, you should take it easy thing. That is strictly me letting you guys know that this is a project that is hard, and I am experiencing a hard project. And I'm stoked. I don't want you to think that I'm not. Like, I'm enjoying the shit out of myself. I'm having the time of my life, but I am beat. So, I'm gonna end the video today because uh, that's what I wanna do. And, <laughs> and it's gonna help keep content rolling because I'll be back in here tomorrow knocking more shit out. But I think I'm gonna end the video here and, and I'll let you guys know what the plan is. Whatever, so this is just unimportant math. It's fine. I sure hope I don't need this later. Let's say that these are our two frame rails, right? This is head on. These are two frame rails that go on the sides. Instead of doing the V shape, I'm just gonna come up here on both sides at like a mild angle, probably like a probably like a 45 degree on both sides, and then come in across like that. Bend the tube at like probably like two 45 degree angles. Made it up really well. I'll create like a mounting surface, and then that way the uh, the tube chassis can just mount directly to that. And then obviously, you know, the whole cross, etc. You know, whatever. That's my idea. It'll change by tomorrow, I'm sure. By the time I end this video, it'll change. But with all that being said, I'm ready to end the video, man. Get home, get cleaned up, relax, and uh, just chill until tomorrow where I come back here and start. Uh... Shit, tomorrow I gotta put in the frame. Tomorrow is definitely put in the frame day. I still have to cut out the trunk. You know, that's not right now. <laughs> It's not right now. But on the way out on today's video, I just wanna say thank you guys so much. The support continues to just grow and grow every video and uh, the, the response has been super positive. I had like a, a good amount of comments last video, people being like, yo, you should start a Patreon to the shop and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not super keen on the idea. Uh, not because I don't dig crowdfunding or I don't want you guys to contribute, I'm just not sure. Um, 
what I could offer Patreon supporters, you know, versus non-Patreon supporters, and I, I feel like I should give back actually to the people who are able to support the channel. So if you guys come up with any cool ideas in the comments, please let me know. Um, in the meantime, if you want to continue to help and support the channel, please uh, like or share the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'd really be appreciative of that. And um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bust it out, man. This video was a lot of. I'm, I don't know what this video was a lot of after editing, but for me, it felt like a lot of. Let's figure this shit out and get it going. So next video, we're gonna start moving along, putting the frame in. Bring it on, because every time that I come across something on this vehicle that is like rusty or damaged or anything like that, I'm just like, hell yeah, that's another piece of the car that I get to make and create and customize myself. It does add, it does add time to the build and probably adds videos here and there. So I'm sure it's not a total loss for you guys either, but like the more I, uh, I tackle with this thing, like the more stoked I get. And I haven't been that passionate about something in a long time. It's good to have that, that drive to just like every day, man, put it on it, keep working at it, make it better, make it cooler, learn more. And I appreciate you guys being interested in that as well. A lot of people are also asking about the 73, like what's next on the 73? I plan to work for the rest of this week on the Mustang and then switch off to working back on the 73. I don't know if I'll find a good stopping point on this car by the end of this week, but if I do, there's a lot of stuff with Detroit Speed I need to work on with that car, getting it ready and whatnot. So, um, you know what, I'll let you guys in the comments say like, hey, uh, let me know what you guys think. Are you guys feeling the Mustang? You guys want to continue watching the Mustang for a little while? Or you guys want to work on the 73 with me for a little while too? A big reason that I started doing the stuff on the Mustang is so I could, I could learn to do it on the 73. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't want to just start learning on the 73 as my first car because what am I gonna do? Fuck this up, it's a, it's a Mustang. So I'll let you guys fight it over in the comments. And yeah, so that's, that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I want to say thank you guys for watching one more time. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. It'll be on the Mustang, probably. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows?